Welcome to Faith Moments, a weekly podcast to proclaim and to ponder our Sunday Mass readings. And here we are, we are entering the journey again in this season of Lent, and it's the first Sunday of Lent. Hope many of you had the opportunity to go to church, maybe even go on retreat on Ash Wednesday, and to enter into the journey, this 40-day journey that we reflect upon the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this time of preparation, really, this season of Lent has a lot of different opportunities for us to grow in holiness, to grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ, to grow in an awareness of how we can serve one another in this world, in my family, in my community, in my world. What's my relationship with myself? What's my identity? What's my relationship with other? How do I serve and care and look for the needs of others? How do I interact with others? How do I think about others? And of course, the most important reflection, because it really guides those other relationships we have, is our relationship with our creator, our God, our redeemer, our savior, our Lord, Jesus Christ. And so, This is a journey for each and every one of us, those of you who are Christian, those of you who maybe are not Christian and you found this podcast in some way and and are wondering, what's life all about? What's the purpose and meaning of life? What's the purpose and meaning of my life? Who am I? Who is my leader? Who do I follow? Who will follow me? Is it to a place that I want to go? And so we'll be unpacking throughout these weeks of Lent through the scriptures, through the writings of the prophets, particularly Isaiah will come alive once again in these 40 days. And of course, in the gospel readings and St. Paul will, of course, do some help in our readings in the second reading of our Sunday mass. So let's get into our readings. But before that, I do want to offer a prayer. And I know so many around the world are praying for an end to war, are praying for peace, are praying for all those that are in war-torn areas. And I just found, I, I love this image of Christ. This was sent to me from the Franciscan Mission Associates in Mount Vernon, New York, Franciscan Mission Association. Um, .org. And so my daily offering, and there's a prayer here for the poor, suffering, and friendless. And sometimes when we are aggressive, when we go and try to oppress or to bully others, we're really friendless. We don't have a friend in God. Do we have a friend in others? Why are we attacking and violating the rights of others? Only God knows the real answer to that. But let's lift all of those concerns, all of those people that are in peril in our prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In your loving and tender mercy, Lord and Father, assist especially those who are poor and deprived, those who suffer, and all who are without hope in this life unless you come to their aid. It is you alone who can bring great good out of the worst evils by your unbounded power. So we trust you to curb the malice of the wicked, to convert sinners, and to bring us all to a knowledge of your love. These favors we beg in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, your only Son, who reigns forever with you and the Holy Spirit, God through all ages. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So many prayers to offer. And before we get into the readings, this really struck me in the Ash Wednesday readings. And there are two things I want to just share with you. And and if you have a, a booklet, these are coming to a lot of our parishes. It's called The Word Among Us. And you may be able to pick up a copy at your local church. There's also the Magnificat magazine that it's a beautiful monthly magazine for the daily readings and lots of meditations for the particular season we're in. And so it's a wonderful way to follow the prayers of the church. And particularly what I like to follow are the entrance antiphon. This is for the daily and for the Sunday readings, of course. And then the collect. 
And the, this is the prayer that the priest prays at the beginning of mass, let us pray. And then he prays this beautiful prayer. And sometimes it'll be the same prayer throughout a, a certain period of time. Uh, might be through just Sundays in a particular season. And then, of course, there is the uh, gospel acclamation. There's a particular phrase or prayer that comes before the reading of the gospel. And so what struck me, particularly in this time we live in, we can look back in history and we can recall different times of history of war, of famine, of, of occupation. We read the scriptures, we look at our history books in all different places around the world. But all we really know is what we live in today. We learn from what we have read and what we maybe have heard through other people's accounts, but we didn't live it. We didn't have to make the decisions. We could say, oh, I would do this or I would never do that if I was in that situation. But we really don't know until we we're confronted with restriction, with violence, with terror, with war in our land, in our soil. And so as we look at what's happening in our world today, we only have a certain perspective from where we are. But listen to this entrance antiphon. And, and why I wanted to say, if you have one of these books, is get into these daily readings and look at these other prayers that surround scripture. Because they, you could take this phrase that I'm going to share with you and use it all through Lent. It comes from the book of Wisdom chapter 11, verses 24, 25, and 27. And it says this, you are merciful to all, O Lord, and despise nothing that you have made. You overlook people's sins to bring them to repentance and you spare them for you are the Lord, our God. Now, when I heard that proclaimed and I read it and I thought about all of the different things that are going on and all of the different organizations that are asking for prayer, particularly for the Ukraine and all the situations that we are undergoing right now in our own country, this reminds us, you are merciful, O Lord, to all. Is he merciful to those who are attacking innocent victims? Is he merciful to those who are promoting abortion? Is he merciful to those who are leading people down a road to destruction? You despise nothing that you have made. The reality is God has made it all. He doesn't make our behaviors and actions. We choose the violence. We choose the oppression. We choose the generosity. We choose the charity. We choose the love and hope. We choose the oppression and the anger and the violence. Depending upon our heart. You overlook people's sins. That's hard to hear right now when we see the evidence of sin, the consequence of sin. What is the greatest sin? It is to completely turn away from God, to completely hate God is the greatest sin in my heart, in my mind is what I'm thinking. But he overlooks our sin so that we might repent, so that there will be a change in the heart of the oppressor. He spares them. There is a mercy in our God, which means we don't merit it. I don't earn that mercy. I'm not good enough for that mercy. And we talked about this last week because there was so much about the heart. You know, whatever's in our heart is going to come out of our mouth. It's going to come out of our actions. It's going to be in our thoughts. How do I think about myself? How do I think about others? How do I think about God? 
And in the book of Joel, which is in the reading for Ash Wednesday, the first two lines say this, even now says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart. We need a heart transplant. Every single one of us on the planet need a heart transplant. The next reading in actually the gospel acclamation for Ash Wednesday said this, this is a familiar phrase. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. We can see in the world actions that are being taken by people with hard hearts. And so we must pray for that heart transplant in each and every human soul. Okay. Again, entrance antiphon, Ash Wednesday, go back to it. I'm going to be going back to it because it's hard for me to grasp the great mercy of our God and that he is looking for, waiting for, our repentance, 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 repentance. That's the season of Lent. Repent and believe in the gospel. First Sunday of Lent is March 6th, 2022. And we'll go into the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verses 4 through 10. Moses spoke to the people saying, the priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord, your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord, your God. My father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became, but there he became a great nation, strong and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers. And he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into this country. He gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the product of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord, your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is from Psalm 91. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. No evil shall befall you, nor shall affliction come near you or tent. For to his angels he has given command about you, that they guard you, in all your ways. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Upon their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the asp and the viper. You shall trample down the lion and the dragon. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Because he clings to me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he acknowledges my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. I will deliver him and glorify him. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Our second reading comes from the letter to the Romans by St. Paul, chapter 10, verses 8 through 13. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For 
if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and is so justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. The gospel acclamation, and just a reminder that in the season of Lent, we refrain we fast from the Alleluia. And so we proclaim praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The gospel is from Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So as we continue to reflect on this time of Lent, we enter the journey again, as I started off the beginning of this program, this journey, this food for the journey, this time of the Lenten season, for those of us, of us who have been Christians for some time, we have experienced the Lenten season year in and year out, but it is a new journey each time we embark the Lenten season, this time of preparation for the season of Easter. This is a time for us to prepare our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits to, to purify so that we can receive the beautiful gift of the Easter message of the resurrection of our Lord. And so there is a purpose for this time of Lent for baptized Christians. This is a time to prepare for the renewal of our baptismal promises. But there are many men and women and young people today who are preparing to be received into the church, possibly to be received in the church, to be initiated through that first sacrament of baptism, and then for many for confirmation, to be confirmed in the church and to receive for the very first time Holy Eucharist at that Easter vigil. So there's much to prepare for in this season of Lent. It is a time to rearrange our personal schedules, our personal calendars, our personal life around the life of the church. And really, I believe we're called to really orient our entire lives every day to the life of the church, to the liturgy of the church. The church's liturgy in her beautiful mass each day 
gives us a direction, gives us a call, gives us a way to reflect on where we are today. And again, my relationship with myself, what's my identity? Who am I and whose am I? My relationship with other, how do I look at others? Do I serve others? Do I take advantage of others? And most importantly, what is my relationship with God? Do I have a positive relationship with God? Do I have a fearful relationship with God? Am I afraid of God? Do I embrace God? What is my relationship with God? And, and that's really where I wanted to go with reflecting in these readings. First of all, in the Psalm, that line that we repeat, and I, I always listen for what that psalm is and what is that message and, and how does it resonate in my heart? Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. And so my question to myself and my question to you is, when have you been in trouble? Think about as a young person. Think about as a, as a teenager. Did you ever stay out late at night and you were supposed to be at home at a certain, at a certain time, your curfew time, and you stayed out later than you were supposed to? Or were you ever at a, a sleepover? I don't know if they still do that, but we did sleepovers, you know, and all the girls would hang out at somebody's house. Did you ever go TPing somebody else's house or egg somebody else's house in the middle of the night at a sleepover? Yes, no, I would never do that. Oh, we did that a lot. Or maybe things that were even worse than that. When were we in trouble in college? If we were maybe going into the military and boot camp or at your first job and you're in this new environment, were there temptations about stealing, about taking advantage of your coworkers, uh, about, uh, well, I'm just going to do the minimal amount of work in order to get my paycheck. Where were we in trouble in relationships? So many ways that I know I can look back at my life and go here, there, then. So many times I was in trouble. And what the, what the psalm reminds me is no matter where I am, no matter where I, where I am in relationship with God, whether I have a close relationship with God, or maybe I haven't talked to him in a while, maybe I haven't really been participating in a relationship with God, he's still present. It doesn't matter where I am. Now it does matter that I should be moving towards him. But the reality is that he is our refuge and fortress. And he will provide us that comfort and guidance when we are in trouble, when we look to him, when our hearts are towards the Lord. When we have a hard heart, we're really not allowing that comfort, that protection, that guidance to always be with us. And so I remember that in those difficult times in my life, I've been grateful to know that the Lord has been there. And now I recognize and call out to the Lord in those times of trouble. St. Paul is so beautiful in his writings about the heart. And he knows that it's in the heart that we change in our relationship with God. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart, he quotes. And when we say, and we believe in our heart, that God was raised from the dead, that God raised Jesus from the dead, and that we were saved because of that. When we believe that in our hearts, it manifests in who we are, in how we live. And so the prayer in this Lenten season is change my heart, O Lord, change my heart, O Lord, transform my heart, transplant my heart so that I believe that you died and you rose for me and for all. It, there's so many uh, reflections, and you've probably heard many homilies on the different readings of scripture that, that show us the temptations of Jesus in the desert. Here we have the version from Luke, and it's just a few verses before chapter four, where we have a just real short account of Jesus being baptized in the Jordan. And then of course we see, or we hear in Luke that he returns from the Jordan and then he's led by the spirit 
led by the spirit to be tempted and to undergo this time of, of, temp, of, of testing, what do you really believe? And, and here's the thing that, that came to me from one of the homilies that I heard this week was when Jesus is being baptized in the different accounts, we hear different words of the dove or something descending on Jesus like the dove. And we hear the voice of the father saying, this is my beloved son, you know, listen to him. And so there is this proclamation by the father himself that this Jesus is the son of God. That's what's being made clear in the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan by John the Baptist. And so what is the devil testing Jesus? He's always saying, if you are the son of God, do this. Well, if you are the son of God, do that. Well, if you are the son of God, then do this. And isn't it interesting that the devil uses and knows well scripture, he knows how God operates. And if this is a son of God, is he going to follow or can I slip him up so that he will follow me? And so the three things, this is just one way that you can look at these three things that the devil is tempting Jesus and can tempt us in as well. The first temptation is about turning stone into bread. Now it's evident that Jesus is physically hungry because he's both human and divine. And so he's been without food for 40 days and 40 nights. And it does point out that he is hungry. His physical body is hungry. And so the devil uses that physical, what do you want the most? What are your needs? What are your needs? first. Well, well, if you're the son of God and you have the need of hunger to, to satisfy that, well, certainly you can turn stone into bread and you can satisfy yourself. You can do what the Lord has said, but do it for your own gratification. And that's the temptation that we can fall into is I could do this for my own self for my own glorification, for my own needs first. So let us not fall down that trap that the Lord, that the Lord uh, wants to prevent us from falling into, that the devil wants to fall, in, us fall, to fall into, is to turn stone into bread, to do this for my needs first. Then he goes on to say that, um, look at all these kingdoms. You could be the ruler of it all. You could have control and power over others. What is our relationship with others? Would we like to have control and power over others to dominate others? Or is that the role for God alone? And so the challenge for this temptation is, are we tempted to, to have control, to have power, to objectify others? What's our relationship with others? Is it disordered? And finally, the devil is tempting Jesus to simply worship him, to have a different God than God alone. Do we worship idols? Do we worship something else, someone else over God? What's our relationship with God? Is he first or do we neglect God? And so these different temptations that Jesus endures with the devil, we also face every day. What's my relationship with myself? How do I look at my needs and my ego? What is my relationship with others? And again, do I serve and love God? Number one, what is my relationship with God? And let us use scripture in the right way to be a blessing and to recognize the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. Let's all have a heart transplant today and continue to listen to the word of God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I want to close with this prayer of hope. God of love and mercy, ease my burdens, calm my anxieties, 
strengthen my faith, and increase my trust and confidence in your caring goodness. Bless me each day with your healing grace, with health in mind and body, and a heart filled with hope and peace. Grant me courage I need, dear Lord, to face all difficulties, knowing that with your help, miracles happen and lives are restored. Amen. God's peace be with you. Have a blessed Lent. We'll be back with you next week.